Hey, what's up guys? It's Two Scoops back with Sonic Academy. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys ShaperBox in two parts. The first video I'll be explaining an overview of functionality of the plugin, and in the second video I'll be showing examples of how I personally use the plugin in real world examples. ShaperBox is a great multi-effects tool by Cable Guys. It allows you to affect time, filters, panning, volume, and stereo width in an LFO and envelope type interface. The cool thing about this plugin is that you're able to chain the different effects internally within the plugin. So for example, if MIDI is being sent to a shaper box, you are able to activate parts or even the entire chain of effects and easily rearrange the ins and outs of each effect to your liking. To start, I'm going to go through each of the effects and explain how each parameter works in correlation with the effect. Time Shaper lets you manipulate time by slowing down or speeding up your samples within the plugin. Uh, to start off, I'm going to uh, kind of walk you guys through the different parameters of the plugin, starting up here on the left with the bands. Basically, what this allows you to do is uh, split the signal into different frequency ranges and affect those frequency ranges with the uh, plugin. Um, I personally wouldn't use this uh, as much with the time shaper as I would with other things, but it could be good if you're trying to get a good st uh, stutter or repitch or time shift on uh, like a high range frequency thing or a mid range frequency or whatever, whichever range you're trying to affect. Um, but personally, like I said, I don't, I wouldn't really uh, use this for that, but it could come in handy if you're specifically trying to get a certain sound. Um, nextly, we have our max offset here. The max offset affects the overall time of the plugin. You can pick one to eight bars. Then there's a step mode, which basically determines how smooth the signal is being processed when it's going through the plugin. And now we move over to the mix knob, and as you can tell, it's affecting the individual bands. So you can adjust the dry wet of each individual signal. Next, we're going to move down to the actual envelope. To show you guys a quick little demo, uh, I'm just going to play this little loop that I have here and uh, kind of just add points to this and uh, just change the envelope and just see how it affects the pitch and the timing of, of everything. And on top of that, um, first and foremost, probably the most important aspect of this plugin to know is how to add points. And you can't just do it by double clicking. It's going to add one of these curving points. Um, the way to actually add the points is by uh, clicking control click. And that's how you make the little points. So yeah, and let's just hear how this affects the loop. So here's the original sound. <laughs> And here's with time. Get a little bit of pitch drop going there. And as you can see, it's just affecting the mid band. But if we do this, it'll be the whole sound. So as you can see, it's, it's really messing with kind of the, the pitch and the time of the sound. Next, I'm going to show you guys the mid offset, which basically enables you to choose how the envelope is triggered. And you're also able to input MIDI into the plugin. Again, they also give you loop length, which is similar to max offset, but it gives you a lot more options. Next, I'm going to show you guys the different presets they uh, have in this plugin. So I'm just going to kind of play through this loop and switch through the different presets they have down here. They have a lot of really good uh, stutters and scratches and tape stops and di just different pitches, reverse, all that kind of stuff, as you can see here. So I'm just going to play through the loop, uh, and I'm actually going to get rid of all these first and then play it. So he kind of kind of stutters it a little bit. This is great for a lot of different variations. If you have like a simple synth part and you want to add a variety to it, it's really good for that. So I'm going to just set her two. It's kind of cool. I'm going to go to the scratch now. This is like a classic scratching right there. <laughs> Kind of like a, a scratch fill. I actually use these a lot in my music now. Tape stops. See some of the reverse. 
so you can kind of reverse the time as well. As you can tell, they give you a lot of really good presets. Next, as you can see, these icons entail the point editor. You are able to delete points, activate step draw mode, snap to grid, randomize wave points, shift wave points, as well as undo and redo changes. You also have the MIDI trigger, which allow you to assign different MIDI notes to trigger the effects. Next, similarly to the time, we have the filter, which allows you to draw a filter envelope or LFO. As you can see here, they don't give you the band separation option, but instead they give you an audio spectrum. Moving to the filter type, there are a lot of options that ShaperBox gives you, from low pass to high pass to notch to band filters. You also have the option of selecting cutoff editing or resonance editing, and again, the mix knob. Now we move on to the envelope. I'm just going to draw on some points and just show how it sort of uh, affects the loop here. And we sort of have just a low pass filter on here. So let's just kind of play this through and, and start adding points. As you can tell, it's a really good quality filter. Let's just change this. Clean high pass. Notch. Let's go to the resonance. You can automate the resonance as well. It's pretty dope. Now I'm just going to switch this back to the, uh, the low pass here, and I'm going to show you guys some of the presets they have. Uh, they just have a, diff a few different options here, so I'm just going to play through the loop and show you guys what's up with that. And as you can see here, it kind of shows the other um, parameter, the uh, resonance parameter in the background lightly. A lot of cool gator kind of uh, filters. Some sweeps. It's cool rhythmic sweeps right there. Again, they give you a lot of really good presets to start from. With Pan Shaper, similarly to Time, Pan allows you to cut the signal into different bands, then adjusting the stereo balance of each frequency range. As you can see here, it also gives you different pan modes to balance the stereo. I want to show you guys just another example of kind of like what you can do with the panning tool. So I'm going to click this here. Let's draw in a few of these. Kind of sporadic, but you know, why not? I'm just gonna pan this. So, I'm gonna uh, show you guys the dry signal and show you guys the wet signal. Let's cut some bands, Let's cut the mid range. We'll go to the, this one too, we'll pan it differently. Now, this is kind of hectic, but. <laughs> Uh, it is what it is. So now we kind of got everything sort of panning in different ways, all the different bands, low to high. Next, I kind of wanted to show you guys uh, some of the presets here. I'm just going to cut this back to mid only and uh, walk you guys through some of these uh, cool presets. So I'm going to start with the rhythm right here. As you can see, the panning tool is very handy for advanced panning techniques. Now moving on to Volume Shaper, probably the most prevalent of the Shaper Box tools. It allows you to draw envelopes in the volume of your sounds. 
Volume Shaper's most common use is side chaining. To show you guys an example here, I'm just gonna switch this, uh, the uh, loop length to be quarter notes. So we have a nice side chain type pattern here. And I'm going to just draw in the points and start playing the sample, so. get a strong side chain going here. The band splitting can come in handy for certain stylistic approaches to the side chaining, such as ducking individual frequencies. Lastly, we have the width shaper. This is a very handy tool when it comes to stereo imaging automation. To show an example, I'm going to run uh, the sample through this again and just kind of draw in points and just show you guys. It's kind of moving uh, mono to stereo. It's a pretty subtle effect. You can affect the bands as well. Make the high range uh, more wide. I'll also kind of walk you guys through the presets too here, so... Kind of a burst of uh, width right there. It's probably easier to hear this if you're listening in headphones. So as you can see, ShaperBox is an extremely efficient tool for multi-effects and is very useful if you're trying to get an all-in-one package for envelope-based effects. In the next video, I will be showing how I personally use ShaperBox in some real-world examples, so stay tuned. Peace. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.